Fisher opened up right there over the super uh, volcano, which, uh, you know, because the Grand Teton National Park is right next to Yellowstone National Park, but the super volcano covers both parks, and it's even larger than that. And this fissure just opened up right over the uh, super volcano. What does this mean? Let me break in right now and remind everyone for 10 days, I promised I would let you know that Noble Gold Investments, Noble Gold Investments, they're the guys to go to if you're just now getting your 401k or your IRA or you have a retirement plan that needs to, do you need to diversify? You don't know what to do with it. Look, I'm not the guy. I'm Pastor Begley. I'm in the cornfields of Indiana. The guy to call uh, is uh, Colin Plume over at noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Let them help you with your 401k or your IRA, or maybe you just got your inheritance or a large um, um, uh, insurance settlement. You don't know what to do. Don't know where to put it. They're a Christian company, family owned, great, great friends of our ministry. So check out Noble Gold Investments. Now, here's what's going on. It's an urgent situation over at Yellowstone, but a 100 foot fissure has sparked an urgent park closure. This 100 foot fissure has opened up in the Grand Teton National Park, not far from, of course, the Yellowstone National Park and potentially this catastrophic uh, super volcano. It's right there. Matter of fact, this giant crack in the Wyoming based National Park has prompted officials to shut down the area to all tourists in case of landslides. And the 100-foot fissure has prompted the closure of part of the Grand Teton National Park. The Grand Teton National Park said that the Hidden Falls and the Inspiration Point areas are currently closed due to the elevated potential of rock falls, landslides. But it's a whole lot more than that, folks. They are absolutely, they got the geologists, they got all the different volcanologists and seismologists, everybody's over there trying to figure out what does this mean? Is the super volcano getting ready to erupt? Are we starting to feel it? Or is it remember, the roads have melted. Uh, we have longer steam. There's a hotter, the, 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 the waters around are, are scalding. Uh, animals are fleeing the park. The uh, cauldron has risen quite a bit. Uh, look, we're just, we're concerned. And with Hawaii, Continuing as the epicenter of the apocalypse, according to Mary Greeley and others, there's a connection between the Hawaii volcano and what goes on at Yellowstone. The magma is moving, folks. The magma is moving. The lava is leaping. And uh, we are really uh, very concerned. Despite uh, this, it's an urgent situation for them to close this part. Matter of fact, uh, if the Wyoming volcano were to erupt, an estimated 87,000 people would be killed immediately. And two-thirds of the United States would immediately be made uninhabitable. So you have to understand, we're talking about a cataclysmic, catastrophic, near-extinction event. Certainly, what would be known as the end of the world for America would have come. And the drastic effects on Canada and uh, the entire Western Hemisphere, and the entire weather patterns of the globe. The ash that would fall would just suffocate so many cities and towns and villages, power outages, lack of water, no transportation systems working, a total state of chaos. So this is why they closed the park. This is why they're watching very closely. This is why they're getting involved, because they realize Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. So we're going to start off over in Britain, and we have an earthquake striking near Gatwick Airport, first reported in 250 years, and it shook houses. It wasn't a large earthquake. It's just that it's a very, very unusual area to get one. And you can see it's very, very close to London. And so quite a few people felt it. It was only a 2.6 on the Richter scale. Uh, it struck at a depth of about five kilometers at 12.30 p.m. And so just, just a curiosity, really. And we're seeing earthquakes in diverse places for sure. 
the other thing that we're seeing is really um, a lot of really, really odd cloud formations, incredible cloud formations. And this is a massive shelf cloud in Poland on June 25th. And look at that. Um, what it looks like to me, if you guys ever remember any of the old uh, monster movies they used to have, like the Godzilla ones and stuff, uh, it's just like you expect that to be some sort of monster in there, gigantic thing going to come out. Just so weird and so ominous looking. And we're seeing these just bizarre cloud formations everywhere, along with incredibly intense severe weather, as we've been saying. And so check out this one. This one is, is labeled as being a mothership supercell. And this is in Kansas. That's just wow. I mean, what an amazing cloud formation there as well. And we know there, were, there was a tornado that struck. And a supercell did form. And just look at some of these photos. Just amazing and ominous and intense so surreal it, it looks like they they uh, are works of art like as if you were going to paint a picture of what the apocalypse would look like and look at that beautiful shot with the lightning coming down it's just incredible those shades of purple and I'll let you guys go ahead and play that video and also they had some severe <laughs> some pretty good size hail and we know there was a lot of damage uh, associated with that storm. Some rivers are so drug polluted, the eels are high on cocaine. Okay? That's crazy, isn't it? Critically endangered eels hyped up on cocaine could have trouble making a 3,700 mile trip to mate and reproduce. New research is warning. And, and that's how polluted it is in some of our waterways. It's, it's just, it's a sad situation. And so, while many times I've said I, I don't believe so much in the man-influenced global warming, I do think that we have had a very horrible influence on the uh, pollution and you know and the environment in general. And as I've stated many times, we were more like a parasite or a virus really upon the earth than something living in a symbiotic relationship with it. And all these pharmaceuticals that you know get flushed down the toilet one way or another entering the water supply and all the drugs you know they, they, they stick around they stick around and and they affect everything they come in contact with yeah. it's really a very very sad situation and as it says here the data shows a great presence of illicit drugs and their metabolites in surface waters worldwide and that was um, stated by Anna Capaldo, a research biologist at the University of Naples and the lead author of the study. She adds that water near densely populated cities is even worse, with some of the research showing particularly high concentrations in the Thames River near London's House of Parliament and the Italian Amo River near Pisa, of the Leaning Tower of Pisa fame. So these poor eels are high on cocaine. And, you know, if you're eating them, or if you're eating fish, you know, that are exposed to these toxins, and you're getting exposed to them, too. And it's just this cycle. It's part of the food chain. So is there a new volcano on Hawaii? And uh, this has been brewing in my mind for a while, and this article basically states it. So really what's happening at Fisher 8, which is the most active one, is, is that a really what we have is, is the formation of a new volcano basically being made and uh, we could see that there is a building uh, crater as you can see here at Fisher 8 and um, it's a very substantial prominent feature at the cone being about 200 feet high and uh, it's one that as it says here is likely to endure for thousands of years unless it's obliterated by later or more violent volcanic activity. And uh, when we're talking about Hawaii and, and talking about the volcanic activity, there's been a lot of interesting things. And here you can see this was where the uh, earthquake was in the UK. And we had that other unusual earthquake up in Sweden. And there was another one in Sweden a few days earlier as well. 
And so if we shift over and, and let's look at what's going on over here in the Pacific, one of the things that hit me was all this activity in Alaska. So much activity in Alaska going on right now. Lots of swarming. And very curious that so many of these earthquakes are at 0.0, .0 kilometers. Many of them are, are very small. But, you know, just wondering what's up with that. Is it a computer glitch going on? Or are we trying to indicate some sort of magma flow? 0.1 And, and we can just see there's like an awful lot of swarming going on right now in Alaska, also in you know, western U.S. as we've seen before. And there's one uh, over here that caught my eye as well. It's a 1.6, so it's not big. But it's, it's 15 kilometers east-southeast of Soda Springs, Idaho. So this is towards the lower part of the Yellowstone area, and it's at three negative 3.3 kilometers. So you know that's that's up around 10,000 feet. And uh, when I look at that position, you know we we can see where it is. You can see Yellowstone National Park up here. So this is kind of how the magma travels, going up from the superplume that starts all the way down. Uh, by Baja, California, and goes on up through California, through Nevada, through Utah, and up into uh, Idaho, and up into uh, Wyoming. And uh, so this is on that path, and that is at a pretty high level, so just curious as to whether that is some magma flow going on there. And as we know, Yellowstone is something that is always got to be taken seriously. The polar vortex generally sits over the North Pole area. There's there's one up in the Arctic and there's one down in the Antarctic. And I watch this null school site, earth.nullschool.net, on a daily basis. And it's been split for a little while now, um, at least a week if not more. And it's, it's a really interesting pattern. And one thing it, that immediately hits me with the way the pattern is going is that if this thing ever lasted long, you know, like into spring or if this develops in the spring and hangs around for a while in the spring, I would think we're going to be in serious trouble because it's actually warmer right now at the geographical North Pole than it is in many parts of Canada and Siberia and this is a great website where you could check temperatures and, and everything um, it, it really is fabulous and it'll give you different layers of the atmosphere and really give you a clue of what's going on here so you can modify you know monitor it yourself And on this map, the coldest temperatures are usually kind of like a, a, a violet color. And so we can see in some of the islands in northern Canada, temperatures of 33 degrees below actual temps, 39 degrees below. And this is not, you know, this is, this is quite a ways south of Greenland and, gre and south of the actual geographical North Pole which really is at like 17 degrees Fahrenheit so it's actually above zero 21 degrees in some areas here way up in the actual geographic North Pole and then we also have extremely cold temperatures over in in Russia and in Northern Europe 26 below 35 below actual temps 27 below 24 below extending pretty far down so very interesting really really interesting when you're looking at it and when you look at some of the temperatures it's it's 35 degrees off the coast of Greenland 
off the northern coast of Greenland. That makes me worry about melting of the ice sheets up there. Because if a pattern like that continued, you know, it could, it could definitely spell disaster. And it's really so amazing how the warm temps are, are going so far up. You know, 36 degrees north of Iceland. Way north of Iceland, really. Um, up into the Arctic Circle. And yet it's way colder, many, many degrees farther south. So we have we have some serious change going on here. I if this isn't you know, I'm just a lay person with this, but if this is not an indication of a pole shift and I don't know. <laughs> it seems like we are definitely watching serious changes going on. Not Al Gore changes, but real changes. And you just have to wonder how long is this going to stay? Now, when you think about the polar vortex splitting in two, I, I wonder if there's some sort of geomagnetic reason for this. Because the sun, well, when it's having a pole shift and its poles are going to flip, sometimes there will be two north poles and two south poles that develop Spon spontaneously. You will have this in the sun. And I wonder if the same holds true for the earth, potentially until equilibrium comes and we find a new balancing point. We know that there's huge changes going on. This is not this is not just one little blip, one little aberration. This is what was talked about from Edgar Casey and some others from time long ago. And exactly what Edgar Casey for one said it really does look like he's right on the nose with things and we, we'll see if that pans out most people were thinking that it was going to happen more like around the 90s and 2000s um, but it appears that things are really happening now as far as the earth changes and again we have cold spells that are shattering temperature records in Washington right now Montana all over the west and the reason is because of this polar vortex split so it's right now it's kind of like we have two north poles there's one sitting in Siberia and there's one sitting you know over Canada that's what it looks like when you when you actually look at it because when we go to the South Pole it's unified and it's summer in the southern hemisphere still and we have some seriously cold temps going on down there 53 degrees below 54 degrees below almost 55 degrees below zero so the southern hemisphere doesn't look abnormal although it does have some intense cold temps going but the northern hemisphere looks bizarre and and we're seeing it weather wise so right now with that dip that we had in the polar vortex you got serious records being shattered and we had it both ways we had serious warm weather records going on in the east coast absolutely crazy in Europe same thing record setting cold Europe's record setting cold weather just switched directions and is heading for the US now so get ready winter's not over people and with the volcanoes going off and, and the potential for more volcano volcanoes going off and I, I would lay money on it the summer will be probably very cool and some people are calling for a summer that won't really be a summer it'll be more like spring and fall temperatures that never quite gets to summer so we shall see and, and that's more for the northern latitudes we have flooding that's continuing massive flooding now going on now the Mississippi is going to have tremendous flooding because you know there's well over a hundred tributaries that flow into the Mississippi and we have 
tremendous flooding going on Michigan Indiana Wisconsin as you could see pretty uh, pretty crazy flooding and Casey talked about all this too Tuesday's record warmth long gone but the region's river flooding persists and this is Toledo all through the Midwest all eyes on the Illinois River here it's a major flood but it doesn't appear to be quite a record yet temperatures plummet as record rainfall freezes and floods on Wednesday morning so this is in the Chicago area record flooding and then the deep freeze settling in so nice deep ice to skate on so what is going on with the other aspects of this such as earthquakes well there's a lot going on and you know California is swarming the whole West is swarming there is so much activity going on out in the western part of the country of course we always have fracking going on in Oklahoma but tons and tons of earthquakes going on in the western part and also in Alaska uh, Alaska swarming still we have a lot of the usual places that are experiencing a lot of earth earthquake activity of course the ring of fire and uh, Greece had several earthquakes this week I remember seeing at least four of them as as the plates there have been active really everywhere in the mid-atlantic ridge New Zealand tons of course over in uh, Chile and in Peru and Ecuador and Bolivia I mean you name it there's a lot of activity there is a volcanic swarm to be aware of going on over in Iceland that is definitely something to keep our eyes on there's potential there and closer to home here in the US we have a lot going on as well probably one of the most scary things at least it's the one that always makes me have a little sick feeling in the pit of my stomach is the Canary Islands La Palma and uh, there's been a flurry of earthquakes over there and you know the the fear is and scientists have done you know basically peer-reviewed studies that show that if La Palma went it would cause a huge tsunami that would affect the entire East Coast and not only that but also Europe too everywhere from UK to France and Spain it would be completely disastrous you know and then the East Coast of the US you know would just be completely inundated with a, a mega tsunami that could literally roll miles inland so it would be one of the scariest scenarios that we could think of you know and, and that's that's one to definitely keep your eye on now this is off of Infowars but there's many other sources talking about the same stuff so this is for real and this is saying major eruption imminent question mark earthquake swarms reported at Mount Hood Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens all of them things are seriously heating up scary stuff but remember no fear and we'll get to that a little bit later and Yellowstone seismic swarm reflects changes in stress along small faults so Yellowstone is swarming as well all the areas active and we know we're gonna have a ton of volcanic activity going on and that is going to increase the cold temperatures so I'll be honest with you I definitely do not well I don't want to have any fear but as far as like listing the things I'm concerned about the the mini ice age is not at the top of my list really I'm much more concerned with what's going on with the pole shift and there are those people that again will say pole shift does not mean crustal displacement it doesn't mean anything more according to some people that the magnetic field changes and nothing happens to the actual earth but we can see that at the very least you're gonna have increased earthquakes and volcanic activity 
whether or not an actual crustal displacement event happens or not. You are going to have tremendous earthquakes and volcanic activity and that's that is happening you know we could see it it's really happening Edgar Casey was an amazing healer really I mean he, you know that's the thing that he did was he would go into his trance and he would tell what was wrong with people miles away he would say the subject has pain under the left rib sensing the spleen overactive take this herb it will help purify the blood or you know he would know there's something going on with the liver take this and do this you know he, he could tell ex exactly what was going on in people's body and give